Application Pools One of the great new features of IIS 6 is Worker Process Isolation Mode. This feature gives IIS the benefit of being able to separate processes owned by an application from other processes owned by another application. The advantage of this separation is that if a process hangs or crashes, it enables IIS 6 to continue functioning and you can shut down the offending process. To take advantage of this new feature, IIS 6 introduces application pools which are used when IIS is running in worker process isolation mode. These application pools form boundaries around your applications, separating them from other applications. And because the worker processes are also separated, if one fails, the others aren't affected, ensuring your other applications are still available. Now IIS comes with a default application pool called, funnily enough, default app pool. So if we expand our server and then expand application pools, we can see the application pools that we have defined. And of course, at this stage, we only have the single default application pool. So if we right click on application pools, we've got a few options. We can create a new application pool or a new application pool from a saved configuration file if we already have one saved. On the All Tasks menu, we can save a configuration of a new application pool to a file that we've pre-configured with our chosen settings. Now at the bottom here, we can also select properties for our application pool. Now setting properties here will define settings globally for all application pools, whereas if we just cancel this for a moment and we right click on our default application pool and select properties, the changes that we make here will only apply to this application pool. Now seeing as we're here for the moment, let's take a look at what else we have available on this menu for this specific application pool. Now we can start, stop and recycle our application pool and recycling is really just like saying restart. Now we can also delete it if it's no longer required and of course we can refresh this screen. So let's go ahead and create a new application pool. So what we'll do is we'll right click and select new application pool. Now we need to give this application pool a name. So I'm just going to call this one here Beach Balls. Now we can choose to use the default settings for this new application pool or we can inherit settings from a pre-existing application pool that we might have. Now I'm just going to leave the default here and choose OK. Alright, now our application pool has been created and will be automatically started. So let's right click on it and choose Properties. Alright, at the top here you can see we have four tabs. The default tab is the Recycling tab and here we have five options. Now our first option is to recycle worker processes. This setting allows you to configure the number of minutes that a worker process will be active before it's terminated and then a new one is launched to replace it. Now you can set any value between 1 minute and 4 million minutes which is just a tad over 7.5 years. Now setting this value too low means that your IIS server will be working hard at just creating and dropping processes all the time. Now if you set it too high, it may never end up recycling processes at all. So how often should you recycle these processes? Well that's a hard question to answer and it really depends on your application. If you're using ASP, the likelihood of memory leaks, for example, would be much greater than you'd expect from ASP.NET. So for ASP.NET, I'd set this value a little higher. Also think about how busy your site is. Do you handle a lot of requests or only a few? If you use this option, it's best to evaluate how your application is behaving itself and what your performance monitor data tells you in order to determine how often you need to recycle processes. Okay, next we can recycle worker processes after a certain number of requests. Now again, you can choose any value between 1 and 4 million requests and again, similar to the above, it depends on what sort of content you have and how well your server is handling it. Now next we have recycle worker processes at the following times. Now this setting will configure certain times of the day each day that the worker processes are recycled. So if we click on add and enter in a time, let's say 0000, then our worker processes for this application pool will be recycled at midnight every single night. 
Now we can also recycle our worker processes based on memory usage and this is useful for preventing memory leaks from trashing our system. Now the two options we have here are maximum virtual memory in megabytes. Now enabling this setting will recycle worker processes after the threshold for virtual memory is reached. Now you can set this value between 1 megabyte and 2 million megabytes. Now our other option here is based on the maximum used memory. Again, it's measured in megabytes. Enabling this setting will recycle worker processes based on physical memory usage rather than virtual memory usage. Again, you can set this between 1 megabyte and 2 million megabytes. Although, with both of these, chances are your server won't have 2 million megabytes of either physical or virtual memory. Well, probably not at least until the next version of Microsoft Office comes out. Now on our Performance tab, we can configure options that prevent IIS from hogging all of the CPU. The first option we have here is to set the idle timeout. Now this setting configures how long a worker process can stay idle before it's shut down. Now this is great because technically this allows more applications to be hosted on a single server, especially those that are frequently idle, as they don't use any CPU time if they're idle. Now the default value is 20 minutes, but you can choose any value between 1 and 4 million minutes. Now next we have the request queue limit, which defines the number of requests that this application pool is willing to queue up before it rejects any new requests, and this prevents the server from becoming overloaded with an ever increasing number of requests. Now if the request queue limit is reached, all new requests will be met with an HTTP 503 server unavailable error. This defaults to 4,000 requests here as you can see, but you can choose a value of between 0 and 65,535 items. Now next we can elect to enable CPU monitoring. Now if we check this box, the rest of the options down here become available. Now firstly we can have the maximum CPU use in percentage. Now setting this prevents the application pool from using all of the CPU especially when it's overloaded. Now here you can set a value of between 1 and 100%. Now next is the CPU refresh usage numbers in minutes. Now this setting configures how long we'll wait before we refresh the values and find out what the load is on our CPU. So the default is to update this statistic every 5 minutes, but here we can select a time of between 1 and 1440 minutes, which is 24 hours. Now the last option we have here is to configure what action is performed when the CPU usage exceeds the maximum value that we've got specified here in the first box. Now the default is to do nothing. Or we could choose to shut down the worker processes within this application pool. Now the final configuration option that we have here is to configure the maximum number of worker processes we want in our web garden. Now this is great because we can have multiple processes handling requests, which can make IIS not only faster because there's more than one process handling the work, but it makes IIS more reliable because if one process fails, the other keeps going. Now the default as you can see is only 1, but you can choose a number from 1 to 4 million. Now just be aware that each new worker process takes almost 5 megabytes of memory just to even start, so choosing a value that's too high can severely cripple your server's performance. Okay, the next tab we have is the Health tab, and here we can configure options designed to keep this application pool healthy or detect problems when they occur. Now the default setting is to enable pinging of the worker processes periodically, with the default being every 30 seconds. Now if a worker process fails to respond, IIS will terminate that process and then it creates a new one. Now you can enter in any value between 1 and 4 million minutes. Now next we have the Enable Rapid Fail Protection, and it's turned on by default. And this setting protects the server by monitoring failures in the worker processes. So if a service fails a certain number of times within a certain time period, now by default it's 5 failures within 5 minutes, IIS will shut down this application pool to protect the server. Now if IIS shuts down the application pool, then the server will respond to all new requests with an HTTP 503 service unavailable error. 
So what happens here if a worker process fails, IIS will write an event to the application log and simply shut down the worker process. When another request comes in, IIS starts up a new worker process. Now this process will continue and if it keeps occurring at least five times within a five minute period, then IIS writes an event to the application log stating that the application pool has been automatically disabled due to multiple failures and any subsequent attempts to access this application will result in that 503 service unavailable error. Now once the application pool has been stopped and restarted, then all of this here will be reset and start again. Now as before, with both of these boxes, you can choose any value between one and four million minutes or failures. Okay, next we have the startup and shutdown time limits. Now when a worker process needs to be stopped, it's sent a terminate request by IIS and then it's given time for the current activities to finish before the process is terminated. And by default, it's allocated 90 seconds to finish what it's doing. However, if the worker process is being recycled, the new process is up and running before the old one is stopped so that there's no interruption in service. Now sometimes a worker process doesn't stop very well or it might have problems starting up. So these timeouts are used to configure how long IIS is willing to wait before deciding that something's wrong and then forcefully terminating the process. Now as you can see, the default for both the startup and the shutdown times is 90 seconds. But again, you can choose a value of between one and four million seconds. Okay, now we've come to the final tab, which is the identity tab. And here we can choose which security account the worker processes in this application pool will use. The default and most secure choice is for worker processes to run as a network service, which gives them limited rights to the operating system. Now here you can also choose a local service which has more rights than the network service as it can access the operating system, but nothing outside the server. And then you have local system, which has full rights to the entire system. Now generally, unless you have a real specific need, it's not recommended that you run this using local system rights. Now if you do want to specify a specific account that you'd like these worker processes to run under, you can choose the configurable button and then enter in an account along with its password. Now if you do decide to use a specific account, then ensure that it is a member of the IIS underscore WPG or the IIS worker process group or it might not have enough rights on the system. Okay, well now that we've configured our application pool, we can simply apply it to a website. So let's use our Beach Balls website. We'll come over here and expand websites. We'll right click on Beach Balls and we'll choose properties. Now we'll select our home directory tab and down the bottom here, we can select the application pool which we want to apply to this website. So we'll choose our Beach Balls application pool. Now click on OK. And our website now belongs to the new application pool. Now if we go and expand our Beach Balls application pool, we can see that the Beach Balls website is running within the boundaries that we've set in this application pool. So there you have application pools. They're a great feature of IIS 6 that enable your web server to run faster and with much greater stability. Now I recommend that you take the time to run through the options you have and test different settings with your applications. Once you're satisfied you found a good balance and you're happy with the performance of your application, don't forget to save your settings to a configuration file, not only for backup purposes, but it also makes it easier to roll them out to any new sites that you might create.